So college baseball here in Romeoville, Illinois today. The Flyers and the Pumas in the GLVC. And as the Flyers get set to take the field here in just a second, right when we take a look at that defensive alignment. The Flyers starters and starting in the outfield. In left field, you've got Scott Householder. Center field, Ryan McManaman. Right field, Ryan Kerner. Around the horn, Miguel Amosquito over at third. Richard Forkin at short. Mike Vusco at second. Tyler Newsom at first base. And the battery will be Steve Almonds on the mound and Brian Norwood at the plate. As far as the, uh, the Pumas of St. Joe's, again, great offensive alignment, as we said, a team batting average of 324, 27 and 19 overall on the year. Look at all those batting averages over 300. Again, leading off, you've got Joe Huber at second base. Wade Finke is the third baseman batting in the two spot. Again, Joe Dispenza, we already talked about, he's the left fielder batting three. Cleanup is Sean Estand, 348 for him after that. You've got Zach Getze, he's your catcher today. Matt Foltz at first base. Joe Pudlow is in right field. Your center fielder is Nate Weglars. And Andrew Jesse is the DH today. And you know, kind of a strange thing in a sense. You've got the DH batting in the ninth spot. Not always the case. Uh, taking a page out of the Tony, La Tony LaRusso book with the A's. Where Tony bat when he batted Tony Phillips down in the ninth spot quite often. No doubt about that. Again, as far as you know, the keys here today for the Flyers is to get out early because I think everybody knows St. Joe's going to score some runs. But right now, our national anthem. <laughs> Similarly, Anthony at Lewis, you can see that flag blowing out today, which could be a key. And again, as far as the freshman on the mound for the Flyers, try to get off to a nice start, get uh, three up and three down, get back in the dugout and see if your team can take the first lead here today. That'd be a nice start against a tough lineup. And Joe Huber will lead it off for the Pumas. St. Joe's again from Rensselaer, Indiana. And of course, that's... Uh, the home long ago of the Chicago Bears spring or their, their, their training camp site back in the, the Butkus Sayers era. And you know, we have mentioned you know, the history of the Flyers. They won three straight national championships on the NAIA level back in the in the mid 70s. You know, St. Joe's, I guess the uh, the biggest name to come out of St. Joe's in their history is a pretty big one in that. And Gil Hodges is an old St. Joe Puma. Uh, their their field back in Rensselaer is named after him. It's Gil Hodges Field. I uh, have a pretty darn good career for the Mets, among yeah, others. Yeah, the Dodgers, the Brooklyn Dodgers back in the old days, absolutely. And, and the right-hander on the hill. And, of course, we've got the, the freshman behind the plate as well for the Flyers. Again, we've seen Joe Huber coming up, the first man to face the freshman on the mound. And, of course, the, uh, the skipper, Tim McDonough, for the Flyers in his third year has really helped this team come along and he and his pitching coach have helped Steve Almanza there come along as well in a big hurry. They have. This program has come a long, long way in just three short years. A uh, year before Coach McDonough took over, they were 8-47, and 47, which historically, uh, for those that know Flyer baseball, that record would have been reversed. But uh, to go from 8-47 and 47 to a game over 500 right now uh, with the two wins guarantees them a winning record for the first time since two th uh, 2000. That's a great accomplishment in that short amount of time. All right, so here we go. So Huber steps in the 329 average. 10 doubles, two homers, 21 runs batted in. On base of 418, certainly something you want, of course, and it's obviously nice to have a left-hander as your leadoff man as well. And the first pitch of the day is going to be high for ball one. And Almanza. Fastball to the mid to upper 80s. Curveball changeup. That's what you'll see a lot from the freshman right-hander here today. 
And the fastball there misses just a bit low, so 2-0 and early on. And one's starting to pick up a little bit, looks like, as well, which could make things a little, little interesting. And took something off there, but misses just a bit upstairs, so 3-0. and And when you're talking about everybody in their lineup over 300 for St. Joe's, giving them base runners, not necessarily the optimum thing, as there's the strike on the outside corner to make it 3-1. Shakes off a sign, now ready. And that one will just catch the outside corner of the knees. Good pitch. Took something off there, and 3-2, see if he comes back and gets Huber. And misses down and away, so a leadoff walk to Joe Huber. Huber's team leading 24th of the season. So Doesn't Brings up Wade Finky now to the plate, the right-hander. Wade Finky. Look down for signs, and again, I don't think you're going to have too much of the sacrifice bunting, those kinds of things from this team with the batting averages they have up and down the lineup. Why give another team outs if you don't have to? As there's a strike right down the middle. But they might want to test out the freshman receiver at some point. It's a pretty good lead there over at first. And they will throw back. He were 14 of 18 as far as stolen bases are concerned. And the pitch. And a beautiful, beautiful curveball there in for a strike. So jumps out ahead here early on Finky with Dispenza on deck, and you don't really want a couple men on for the three, four hitters coming up next for the Pumas. Go back over to first again, but not close. With one of those reminders, yes, we know you're over there. And here it comes. Took something off, and it's rifled deep but foul down the left field side, up out of the hill down that way. Just a loud strike, and it stays 0-2, or excuse me, 1-2. And, so Almanza delivers, and it hits him. You know, up and in a little too much. He'll take that off the upper arm and take his base, and all of a sudden a walk and a hit batsman, and it's two on. Nobody out for three, four, five coming up now for the Pumas. Disappointing at bat there for Almanza after taking off and starting out 0-2. Joe Dispenza. You need to pitch inside certainly, but obviously that one got away. This is another left-hander at the plate and Dispenza. And fouled out of play left field side for a strike as we mentioned earlier on. A 25 game hitting streak earlier on in the season. Straight away for the lefty at the plate and deep defensively. And the 0-1. And that one fouled back to the screen, so gets ahead of Dispenza here. I can't afford to let him get away though. And great day. Anytime you can get temperature in the 70s and no real chance of rain after the storms rolled through last night. You can't complain. There's the pitch. Bouncer towards second. See if they can turn it. Nope, it's going to roll up and over the arm of Usco into short right field. A run's going to come in. Play at third will not be in time. So runners at the corners. And a little gift early run. Given to the Pumas here. Almanza made a nice pitch, got him to roll over on a, on a ball. Taylor made double play ball, and Vusco just hung back on it, took a little funny hop, Sean runs course. And well, like you said, that's one you can't hang back on. You've got to be moving forward. And it definitely played him, rolled up the arm. And with that, first and third, a run in for Sean Esten. So a 1 nothing St. Joe's advantage here. So Huber scores. Thank you all the way to third, Dispenza at first. 
So Sean Esten at the plate. And a high fly ball. Deep center field towards the fence. We'll watch this one leave the yard. And just like that, Esten with a three-run homer, 4 nothing Pumas. And we talked all about this very potent offense. And they're showing it to us here in a hurry. Yeah, that's Esten's ninth home run of the season. Team leading just as a pitcher just eats at you when that uh, that double play ball that would have been a two run game turns into a four run game. So not the great start for the Flyers and you know the defensive miscue is really something we thought we might see today more from St. Joe's and obviously we have a long way to go but St. Joe's you know that's the one maybe you know rough point for their game is their defense they've made quite a few errors this year you know as opposed to the Flyers defense but Boy, a walk, a hit, batsman, and error—not the way you want to start a key game today. No, and uh, uh, St. Joseph's as a, as a team fielding average is 935. Ideally, you want that up around 960, and 935 is actually ranks them 204th in the nation defensively. And here's a replay of the home run. That's the delivery and the breaking ball, but it stays up, and then it kept going up and out. <laughs> as uh, we talked about, Esting, what a good hitter he is, and again. That one up in the zone, he took advantage of it. So Zach Getze. And that one a strike. Outside corner at the knees. Good pitch there. Now again. Freshman gonna have to buckle down here. And we've got one that just caught the inside corner. So 0 2. He's had a bunch of 0 2s here early, but still finds himself down 4 0. Swing and a miss. Got him on three straight. They'll have to throw him out at first, but they do. And they do get the first out. Norwood, nice job of keeping that ball in front. Pop out and make the throw. Matt Foltz. So Matt Foltz is the first baseman. Of course, we did mention that too early in, in our pregame conversation about how there are going to be runs scored today. So <laughs> you can't panic. Yes, it's 4 nothing early, but I would venture to say both teams are going to have double digits before this one's over. As a coach, Coach McDonough is probably not hope, hoping for a double-digit game. <laughs> Pitch inside, but it would not surprise me in the least. So ball one to Fultz. First baseman watches that one. The off-speed misses high and inside. So 2-0. and oh. the Call for the pitch comes from the bench. Relayed to the catcher, then to the pitcher. Quite often in college. As that one rifled foul on the third base side for a strike. Rub up the hands. Get back in as Fultz with Pudlow, the right fielder on deck for St. Joe's. Off to a great start here in game one. Is this one down low for a ball? I guess should take a second to remind people that, again, it's a nine inning ball game and it's straight baseball rules. There is, you know, the DH, but. And there's no re-entry, no courtesy runners, those kinds of things. It's straight baseball here in the D2 level. There's a line shot left field. That's going to drop in for a base hit for Matt Fultz. And believe it or not, that's just the second hit of the inning. Because there was the walk, the hit batsman in the air. And then Homer and now a single with one out for Joe Pudlow, the right fielder. Freshman. To bear down now against Pudlow with those numbers, four homers, 26 RBIs. As they try to hold a bunch of lefties here in the early portion of their lineup as there's a strike on the outside corner. Okay. First and wasn't really that big a lead anyway. Back up to the mound. Stretching the pitch. And slice that one foul again. And here to the, the parking lot, which is beyond the third base side, the third base stands. You have to strategically park. I know I did when I got here to make sure there was a nice big Jeep in front of me, just in case you know, another foul ball goes towards where I was parked. As did I. <laughs> the furthest spot away. <laughs> yes. 
the long walk is worth it for peace of mind, basically, for the foul balls here. That one jammed him, and it's a nice pitch that was popped up the right side. And just behind first base for Newsom to make the catch for out number two. Very nice pitch off the bat handle there. Almanza did a nice job of spotting that fastball in on the hands, up a little bit, and just sawed him off. Nate Weglar is now. Again, pretty nice when you're eight hitter, bats 344, and has 20 runs batted in and an on base of 462. <laughs> Tells you why they're in the top four, just about every offensive category in the GLVC, and why they are ranked seventh in the region right now. They can score. There's a strike. Good change up in the upper part of the zone. Sometimes good to be a freshman when you don't know, know any better. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let's go out there and pitch. Here it comes. And again, good fastball inside corner there. Obviously that's his key. Mix it up. Those speeds with the change up and the fastball. As you can see, Weglar, as he really crowds the plate from the right side. And that's a big lead there at first. You can also see. Does not go. And that's a floater into right field coming in and over towards the line. It'll drop in there for a base hit in front of Kerner. Runner goes to third, so runners at the corners as the offensive attack can, continues for the Pumas on the base hit to right field. So Foltz to third, Weglar is at first. Two out for the nine hitter, the DH, Andrew Jesse. Freshman Almanzen needs to get out of this without any more damage. That was the second time this inning he's gotten ahead to 0-2 and let the, let the batter get away. Just another left-handed batter. Runner does go. Swing and a miss. They're going to throw all the way through. Not get him, though. The runner at third will hold, but that's a stolen base for Weglars. So it's second and third now. Base hit for the night here. Might score two more. And that one, a good strike on the outside corner. And it's very early maybe to be talking about keys situations in a game, but I've got to think <laughs> to get this man out right now would be huge for the flyer. There it comes. And a beautiful breaking ball that drops right in there for strike three, and Jesse knew it. Just turns his head, walks back, and says, okay, you got me that time. But, boy, great first inning for the Pumas of St. Joseph's. They come up with four runs in the inning. On three hits, they leave two. Bottom of the first coming up. Flyers on their way to the plate for the first time after this. Sound like Shore Sports. So bottom of the first here. Flyers come to the plate for the first time. This is the defense they will see. The Pumas in the outfield. you got Dispenza in left. Weglar's in center. Pudlow in right. Around the horn. Finke at third. Eston at short. They've got uh, St. Joe's has Huber over at second. Foltz at first. Getsy Kenshin and Meyerchick on the mound. We'll talk more about it in just a second. The lineup there, you see it for the Flyers. You've got Ryan Kerner leading off in right. Richie Forkin, the second, the shortstop batting second, followed by Scott Householder. And it's Miguel Al Mesquita, Tyler Newsom, Michael Weedo, Brian Norwood, Ryan McManaman, and Mike Busco as that's a chopper towards short. Play at first in time, and right away, Ryan Kerner is retired on the 6 3 put out for out number one. He's a pitchy fork in the man we talked about in the, the pregame conversation with that 404 batting average. There's that chopper up the middle, just in front of the bag for the play. The lefty at the plate, Forkin. And the first pitch for a strike. High pop, left side. Short stop under it, that's Eston. And he will make it fight that went a little bit, but make the grab and a couple quick outs here. Let's bring up Scott Householder. Meyer check the right hander. Well, that would be huge for his team to get three quick outs after they scored four. You can see that guard on the helmet for householder he of the broken jaw but 
those very good offensive numbers as well. Here's the delivery. And foul out of play for for Meyerchick. Same thing in a sense as Almanza with a fastball, you know, mid to upper 80s, but his breaking pitch is more the slider as opposed to the curveball of Almanza. And then again, he's got the change up as well. And the right hander delivers. And that one, did he go around? Yes, he did. The strike here to Householder on the ski to next. Meyerchick solid control in the season, though. He's got twice as many strikeouts as he does walks. And that one would just miss the outside corner. Pretty good pitch, though. Didn't get the batter to chase. And one and two. Line shot. That's going to be foul down the right field line. Came around, hit it hard, but foul for Householder. So Flyers down 4 nothing early. But again, long, long way to go yet. Two out bases empty. And he'll reach out at the end of the bat, foul that one off and stay alive. Good job spoiling that pitch. That was a good pitcher's pitch, off speed pitch away. Scott did a nice job of just flicking that away. And another one, two. And swing and a miss. Good break pitch going Flyer down and in against three. the lefty. It gets him on the strikeout to retire the side. So the Flyers go down in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody laughs. We're through one complete inning. St. Joe's leads Lewis 4 0 again. Back after this, Lakeshore Sports. So top of the second inning, and St. Joe's at the plate with the top of their order. That's Joe Huber, who has already walked and scored in the first pitch. This is high and outside for ball one. Left-handed batter. It's the ready freshman on the mound. Delivers. And that one a strike on the outside corner. He had 31 pitches in that first inning, Brian. And obviously it's a nine inning ball game and you'd like him to go relatively deep. It's a four game series. This is just game one. So he's got to buckle down here. Oh, good pitch there. Off speed swing on this. Uh, the first pitcher of a weekend series. You'd like to see him at least get into that. Get through that sixth inning. So you really don't eat up your bullpen. Uh, I'd like to see Almanza you know, buckle down here over the next few innings and cruise along. And a good swing and a miss there. Had him out front again and another good off speed and down he goes. So registers the strikeout. So one away for Wade Finke hit by a pitch and scored in the first. But boy, that's why he definitely needs a quick inning here pitch wise if he can as that's a breaking ball that just misses again we're going to see some offense here today because it's a relatively small ballpark it's only 385 to dead center but in a sense well quirky setup is there's a high deep drive left field going back to the track and this one's gonna go householder watches that one go over the fence for the second homer of the day finky makes it five to nothing Talking about that outfield wall right about there where it went out. That's only about 350 probably in left center. So it's strange dimensions in a sense. In some places really deep. In some places not so much as you can see that one again. Just an inside fastball. Householder looked like he was trying to time it, but the ball just kept carrying on him. It's going to carry today with that wind blowing out. Is that one fouled back to Joe Dispenza? We get 385 to dead center, but it's actually probably 395 to right center. Well, only, like as we said, about 350 to left center. So strange dimensions here in a sense is that one hit very well to center field, but this one will stay in the ballpark and just in front of the track caught by McManaman for the out number two of the inning to bring up Sean Estin. Sean. Only 300 down the line in right, but it's a much higher fence there. In the 335 on the left field line with a shorter fence. So it's, it's not a cookie cutter ballpark to say the least. So two out, one in, nobody on for Aston, who had the three run homer his first time and takes a strike outside corner with the knees. So five nothing Pumas. There's a high fly ball right field going up 
And guess what? That one's going to go out as well. Up over the trees in right center. Eston, two at bats, two home runs, and six to nothing. That short porch in right field came into play right there. Long fly ball in some ballparks, just in the right center there, but with only being 325, just lifted it up, carries on out. Again, goes the opposite way with that one. You see the 325 sign, but again, it's a very big fence, but it cleared it by plenty into those trees and over. And a breaking ball there for a strike upper part of the zone to Zach Getze, who he had struck out the first time, the catcher. The 0 1 to him. And chop that one foul. Well, he's been 0 2 to a bunch of guys here today, but still finds himself down 6 0 in the ball game. And no activity in the flyer bullpen yet, though, either. Breaking pitch is a deep drive left field. It's gone if it's fair, but. This one's going to be foul, thank goodness. Well, when they're hitting them, <laughs> they're hitting them with authority here early. There's been some swings and misses here for those 0-2 counts, but when they make contact, it hasn't been cheap yet. So the other 0-2 here to Getsy. And up in the zone, one and two. I'd like to see a guy challenge him 0-2, but not give him something like that to hit. He almost hits him there with a the pitch up in the zone, although Getzey really crowds the plate and actually sort of walked into that one in a sense, but still misses him to go two and two. And a swing and a miss. Oh, a great straight change there. Gets the strikeout, but more damage done as two solo homers in the inning and bottom of the second coming up 6 nothing. St. Joe's back with more here on Lakeshore Sports. So bottom of the second inning here at Brennan Field at Lewis U and the Flyers though got to get going on offense. They trail it six nothing. It'll be four five six in their order. Amesquita, Newsom, and Wido here against Meyerchick on the mound. Who's been staked to a nice six nothing lead. That's a <laughs> nice little gift he's been given here early on. Uh, Meyerchick just gets to sit back and throw some strikes here and make some guys get some outs. Miguel Amesquita, see if he can get it going for the Flyers. And that went up in the zone for ball one. Right-hander waits. Open stance, as you can see, and he'll take that one. It'll just miss at the knees. Matter of fact, gets away momentarily. But catcher gets he will track it down. Sun peeking out from the clouds. A yeah, beautiful day, upper 70s here today in Chicagoland. That one a strike. Good pitch on the inside corner. So you want center fielder. Reglars is shading him to right center. He has got all the left center field to aim for. Instead, he cues it foul down the right field line for the strike. But if he can pull the pitch, he could run forever with that ball rolling into left center field, maybe. So what happens on the 2-2? Two -two? And chops it foul to stay alive. And we talked about the fact that we'd see a whole lot of offense here today, and so far we have, but only from one of the sides. We need the Flyers to contribute to that offensive output we were talking about. Swing and a miss. Boy, pulled the string beautifully for the strikeout. A mosquito goes down. 45, Tyler Newsom. So one away for Tyler Newsom, first baseman. Left-handed hitter who's or been around, I guess, is the better way to say that. <laughs> He's was drafted out of high school by the Baltimore Orioles, but chose to go to college and or colleges, I guess we should say. He started out what Michigan State. I started at Michigan State, went to junior college, and wound up here with the Flyers. Pitch outside for a ball. Now was he one of those what eight guys we have? I think from Triton College. Or <laughs> He's not. <coughs> excuse me, not not one of the eight guys, but. Is that pitch outside for a ball? The Flyers do have a host of guys who come over from Triton Junior College, a great baseball program they have. And the 2 0. That one a strike on the outside corner. Triton with the home of what? Kirby Puckett, among others, the Hall of Famer. So if they send ball players to us, that's fine. <laughs> I don't think they'll mind. And swing and a foul tip for a strike. 
Pitcher hangs on. Two and two. And Newsom's a South Suburban kid, uh, South Suburban Community College kid. Also another very, very good program. Absolutely. Big rival at Triton. High fly, center field coming on. Still coming on, and the dive as it turns out for Weglar is to make it interesting with the wind and the sun to deal with. I guess he thought the wind was going to carry it more than it did. That was a, that was a long run for, for Weglar's. And you want to play deep against him, and as he figured the wind was going to take it there, and realizes, oh, uh, you know what? <laughs> I better keep going here. And <laughs> nice job. To, for the middle infielders, in fact, they stay out of his way. I think so often that's what happens with those collisions is the middle infielders figure the center fielder's not going to get there, and all that causes is more trouble. There's a strike to Michael Weedo, the DH. Well, for Chicago fans, they know that real well with Ozzie Guillen. They ended his career with the White Sox that way. No question. Swing and a miss to the DH. Waved at that breaking ball on the outside part of the plate. 0 and 2. The D.H. Wido, who's spent the better part of the year really as the second baseman. Pitch high and outside, but D.H.ing today. He was a team sh starting shortstop last year. Struggled a little bit picking up the ball in, the f in uh, uh, spring down in Florida. A pitch outside. And Vosco had struggled over at second base, so they, they slid Wido over to second and moved uh, Richard Forkin, who had started the season over third, over to shortstop. Swing and a miss. Waved at that breaking pitch. And two straight, one, two, three innings for Meyer Chicks. So he's been very impressive. Two innings in the books in St. Joe's with a 6 nothing lead. Again, back for more after this on Lakeshore Sports. So here we go with the first pitch of the third inning, and that's going to just miss the outside corner. That's a ball to Matt Fultz of St. Joe's, who's been staked to a 6 nothing lead here. It's the freshman Almanza who delivers, and that's a swing and a miss. Good pitch on the inside part of the plate. Tried to golf that one and missed it, and it's one and one. Fultz singled in the first. He scored four times in that first, twice in the second. Here we are in the third, and that one will just miss the outside corner, two and one. Bolts. Again, 324 as you see, 35 runs batted in. There's plenty of opportunities for RBIs in this team. Everybody's always on base. That one crushed a dead center field. And guess what? That one in the trees as well. And Fultz will join the home run parade as you watch him around the bases. And Brian, that was another no-doubter. Didn't really fool him much on that one. It was just a fastball sitting in the middle of the plate and a line shot that McManaman spun around on. Well, as you say, that one, no doubt, caught too much of the plate, and he got it all, to say the least. And we talked about the short porch to dead center, but that would have gone out of just about any ballpark, I think. So they have four home runs already. We're just in the third, and Joe Pudlow has popped out to the first baseman as he stands in, and it's 7 nothing St. Joe's. And that one, a high pop. Left side of the infield, shortstop will have to battle the sun and the wind, but... Handles it nicely, does Forkin for the out. So one down for Nate Weglars, the center fielder. Well, the uh, the times that the Flyers have been here on Lakeshore Sports, at least for the men, things haven't gone too well. Brian, the women, I think, have done very well here on TV, but the men, not so much. Uh, Flyer women undefeated on in four Lakeshore broadcasts. The, the uh, Flyer men, on the other hand, I, I, are 0-6. Oh, my. So the basketball and the volleyball haven't done so well on the men's side. Figuring the baseball would do better, but not a great start today. As there's a swing and a miss to Weglars. Singled and stole a base in the first. Uh, baseball being the most superstitious sport there is, hopefully uh, bringing that up will bring <laughs> some good vibes. There you go. Swing and a miss. Pulled the string nicely there on Weglars, who was out in front. Again, right now, it's the crooked number seven on the St. Joe's side of the scoreboard. But again, a long, long way to go. Freshman shakes off a sign. And the delivery. And that one off the catcher's glove, which didn't help matters. I thought it might have been called a strike. As a matter of fact, it was, and it is going to be strike three. Okay. 
So let's take a look at that. It originally was not handled by Norwood cleanly, but they do get the out. And he did call it a strike. That fastball that just came back over the outside corner there and caught Norwood in the thumb and squirted it out. High pop, short left field towards the line, long run. Householder will come on, and he dives, cannot make the grab. Batter goes towards second base to beat the throw. Great effort by Householder, but couldn't quite corral it. Householder had a long way to run for that ball. Made a nice effort, got a glove on it on the dive, but just couldn't get to it. So that means that Andrew Jesse at second base, two out. Runner at second for Joe Huber. And this is his third trip to the plate, and we're in the third inning. There's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Good change up up in the zone. He was out front for the strike. Huber walked and scored in the first, struck out swinging in the second, and already here. Heading again in the third. There's the pitch. And that one will be taken just outside. Check to swing. Did he go around? No, he didn't. Did not. Oh, I guess he did. The umpire says 0 2. So the umpire holds up the two fingers. And here comes the pitch. That's going to be high. So Flyers. Down seven here in the early going. And again, if you're wondering why the pitcher is still in, I mean, that's the reason, as we talked about. It's the first game of a four game series, as that one fouled to the screen. And there's a lot of baseball yet to be played, and you can't burn them all in game number one. Very true, but even with that, you uh, can't let this one get away either. Uh, Coach McDonough's got the number 44, Ryan Servos, up in the pen, a right hander. Uh, he's warming to. Perhaps take over here if Almanza that misses up in the zone. But you're right. I think now is the point where you can't afford to let him go any farther if he gives up any more. Swing and a miss. Again, nice off speed there. The batter out in front. And the strikeout is recorded. That's actually six strikeouts. For Almanza, I guess that's the frustrating part. He's Cade six, but he's given up seven. Bottom of the third on its way. For college baseball next on Lakeshore Sports. Bottom of the third, Meyer Chick. His delivery is a strike to the seven hitter in the Flyers order. Brian Norwood, a ten hitting catcher. It's Norwood, McManaman, and Vusco. Seven eight nine coming up for Lewis. Down seven nothing. And that went down and in. Again, Meyer Chick's been very effective so far. He's faced the minimum six batters. Three strikeouts already. Big ready delivers. And that one will just barely catch the knees, I guess. Give him the benefit of the doubt. Open stance. Watch that one go for the inside corner strike three. So Norwood goes down looking. K number four for Meyerchek. Nice moving fastball there by Meyerchek. Started to, just started just inside and came back over the inside corner. Brings up the eight hitter and center fielder Ryan McManaman. Two eleven, but does have three home runs on the year. And watches that one bounce in for ball one. Did not go. As they appeal that one. McManaman's one of four seniors who were freshmen when the, on that eight and forty-seven team. So I've seen the, the full gamut of the Flyers in the last four years. There's a chop foul at the plate again. Twenty-six and twenty-five overall now. Fourteen and thirteen in the league. And if they can stay over that five hundred mark, as we said, they'll be in the conference tournament. And chance to get to 30 wins for the first time in, in quite a while here. Since since before 2000, so it's been at least 10 years. And the pitch, swing and a miss. Didn't really commit to that swing until it was a little too late there. 
at his best swing. Got fooled on the breaking ball there. Thought it was a fastball. Slider just tailed away on him. And waves at that one down and away, and down he goes. So K okay, number five and three in a row now for Meyerchick. But again, when you've been given a seven nothing lead, boy, that, it just makes life a whole lot easier. Just wear back and heave. Let's two up two down for Mike Fusco, the second baseman. Make your coaches happy. Just keep throwing strikes with a big lead. Better believe it. Fusco, the batting average not great. He had a tremendous year last year. But he still gets on base. He walks quite a bit as there's a strike on the outside corner. Uh, second on the team in walks as a freshman actually hit 341, but has uh, struggled a little bit with a, a shoulder injury that's limited him. Chopper to the right side. Second baseman coming on is Huber and not going to be in time. He just flat beat that one out. That's great hustling down the line by Vusco. And that's Vusco's game. He hits a ball on the ground and, and beats it out. Take a look at this one. Just chopped it in front of the plate. Hopped right over the pitcher's mound and then foot race down to first base and beat it out. And Huber got rid of it as quickly as he could. And even if it would have been handled cleanly, still he had that one beaten out. So that's a base hit. Runner on two out for Ryan Kerner. All for one so far with a bounce out. And he'll slice that one over towards the right side where it's dropped by the second baseman Huber. But so there's plenty of time to toss it over to Fultz at first for the out to retire the side. So Flyers finally get a base runner, but that's it. We're through three. Flyers down 7 nothing. College baseball returns after this on Lakeshore Sports. 2-3-4 yeah. at the plate for the Pumas. It's Wade Finky, and he'll watch that one drop in there. Just misses. One and one to Finky. Hit by a pitch and scored in the first, and solo homer in the second as he stands in. It's a pretty good pitch there. And Right now, Amon's in a situation where he needs all of them he can get. And he needs a good inning here. There's a strike outside corner with the knees. That might have been a little bit payback. We'll take it. One and two. The two hitter, Finky. There's the delivery. Hard bouncer foul the third. Stays one and two. As we're talking about the Lewis Flyers, the team that We've mentioned the national championships they, championships they had in the 70s as an NAIA school. The coach at that point, Cordy Gillespie, as that one bounces in. And, of course, he's a, a legend in these parts and, frankly, a legend in coaching everywhere. I mean, he is the all-time winningest college baseball coach at any level. And he spent a lot of time here. A lot of those wins were right here on this campus. At 26 years here as a flyer, was the first coach as that one crushed to center field, and guess what? Over the trees again. Second home run for Finky, and it's now an eight to nothing ball game. Well, when we talked about this team's offense before the game, guess what? We weren't kidding. <laughs> really putting on a show here today. Uh, didn't miss much there. Uh, fastball up. Just took it where it was and drove it deep to center field. Well, that's his fastball strikes. We talk about wild in the strike zone, and that's what it's been today for Almanza. As that one, a breaking ball that hits Dispenza in the shoulder, and he'll take his base. He'll trot on down. He knows there wasn't anything intentional there. Let's face it, Almanza needs outs, <laughs> and that was just a curveball anyway, so... It's a runner on, however, with nobody out for Sean Estan, who already has a three-run homer and a solo shot himself. Almanza needs outs, but he's also given up five home runs. That might have been a little bit of a message as well of, you know, I'm frustrated, but you're not going to be up on top of my plate. Yeah, the old don't dig in. He was crowding the plate, that's for sure. Estan, there you go. That's not a bad day already. 10 homers, 53 RBIs for a stand now. Swing and a miss out in front of that changeup. These batters can get greedy. You see all those home runs. You figure, I want another one. And read the tee off. Try to keep them off balance. Here comes the 0 1. And a high fly ball. 
deep left field, and that one is going to go as well. It just barely cleared the fence, but it's enough to make Estan three for three with three three homers. Well, he has a solo shot, a two-run homer, and a three-run blast. All he needs now is the grand slam. They have the cycle for the home runs there, and he's gone to all three fields. He's, he went to center field in his first at bat, went to right center in his second at bat, and now he's gone to left center. And the route is on 11 to nothing St. Joe's and we are only in the fourth and you know, Coach Mack going to come out to pull him out. So the change is made. And we'll take a break and tell you about the new man coming on and uh, in just a minute. But it's all St. Joe's <laughs> pitching changes next after this on Lake Shore Sports. So new pitcher on the mound getting loose, Ryan Servos, as you see him there. And uh, Ryan, high earned run average, but a situation where right now he's in a situation where you cannot give up too many more base runners or runs right now. No, but he's, he's been one of the primary middle relievers for the Flyers all year long. You know, he's got 11 appearances, you know, 15 innings. Um, he's just he's going to be asked to eat up some innings here in the middle of the game. Try and hold this hold this score where it is and allow the Flyers to just start chipping away and get back. Uh, six four right handed sophomore from Aurora Illinois he went to Obonsi Valley High School. And the first man he'll face is Zach Getze. And he needs to get on the hit parade. I'm sure he's getting all sorts of grief from his teammates being over two so far with a couple of strikeouts. But the way they've gone so far but did get ahead of ourselves. It's actually 10 nothing right now. I want to make sure we have the right score 10 nothing. Base is empty. Nobody out. Fourth inning. First pitch ground ball base hit left side and Getze does get in on the act with his first hit today. Matt Fultz will be up next. He's got a homer and a single, so he's got a two for two day going. And boy, the Pumas brought their hitting shoes today. I thought when we mentioned the jinx that things were going to change, right? <laughs> Apparently that didn't work. <laughs> Want to mention it again? And he's runner on, nobody out. And stretch in the delivery from a slender right hander. Drops that one in there for a strike. Good pitch. Oh, and one to Fultz. Pudlow would be next, and Weglars and Jesse for the Pumas. And 27 and 19 for them. And we talked about how this was important for them, too. They want to get into the national tournament. They're playing like a tournament team here so far today as that pitch goes over the head of the batter, all the way to the backstop. So, to say the least, a definition of a wild pitch, and the runner goes to second. Fastball up in his own that just got away from him. And Norwood had no chance to be able to try and handle that. So we're at second, nobody out. And the pitch to Fultz, up and in the back of the way. I should mention this is a nine inning ball game, but GLVC does something interesting in their double headers. It's always, you know, since you're in the Midwest, you have to play double headers pretty much every day to try to get your games in. So it's a double header today. Obviously, we're only broadcasting game number one. Is that one down and away? But the way they do it is game one's a nine inning game. Game two, seven innings. And then tomorrow, they'll flip flop. But game one tomorrow will be seven. Game two will be nine. So two nine, two sevens. A quirk with the, the Sunday double headers, though, if the seven inning game, that first game, if it goes extra innings, the second game of the doubleheader automatically becomes a seven inning game. <laughs> that was ball four to Fultz. He'll take his base. Well, that makes sense, though. I mean, I, I, you're, so you're definitely going to get your innings in and get your games in. It's been an amazing spring. We basically really only have one makeup game to deal with on the Lewis side. And, and our weekend weather has been phenomenal. We, we've had. I don't know if we've had a home weekend where the temperature has been below 50 degrees. Breaking pitch for a strike on the outside corner. Good pitch that time. I don't believe servos. I mean, this has been a strange spring in that sense. You're normally worrying about getting snowed out or, you know, a ton of rain outs. Been playing pretty much every day. And like you say, I haven't had to worry about too many games in the 30s. There's a swing and a miss there. Good off speed pitch. That is the third weekend series I can remember. Being in the 70s, so it's it's been awful nice for those of us with allergies. Not as nice. 
as everything's bloomed early. <laughs> Very much so. The 2 Shot to center field, and that's going to be a base hit. Run around in third. They will send him. Here comes the throw up the middle of the diamond. It'll be cut off right in front of the pitcher's mound. So it's an RBI for Pudlo as Getzey scores from second. Foltz will hold at second. So now it is 11-0 St. Joe's and first and second. Still looking for an out to be recorded here as Nate Weglars will come to the plate. Using up a lot of ink in my pen so far, Brian. And I pitch up and into Weglars, who has a single, stole a base in the first. He struck out looking in the third. 